our biggest challenge. I'm not sure that I have an answer to it, other than to say that our position is that if we invest in the preparation of these innovators to execute successfully, then it's not as risky. Uh, the business is not as risky. The opportunity is not as risky if we say that these innovators have been given all of the tools that are necessary for them to be successful. So that's our position. And um, it is a big challenge. I think it's a challenge for most of the organizations in this room that you want to continue to do what you've done, that you continue to give funding for, but then how do you move out and branch out into something different to get better results? And so what I will suggest is do it in baby steps. Maybe not your entire organization at once, but a new program that will ultimately um, affect the bottom line in terms of your social impact that you're having. But I encourage you to step out. It's what we're trying to do in the Office of Social Entrepreneurship to balance those proven models with those that are new. And so I think that you all can do that on a micro level inside of each organization. Step out, do something new that will ultimately impact your underlying social um, mission but then also continue to do the things that are proven and slowly tip the balance the other way. So um, I'm going to reference your presentation. I think our biggest challenge is our egos. Um, I get to work with successful business people who want to make a difference. At the same time, they're very commanding, influential type A personalities who go into nonprofits and want to help. And when I first started working in the social venture partner world and I started going to all my nonprofit conferences that I go to because y'all are my peeps, right? Um, I was kind of received like, oh, you represent the business people. Y'all, the lines are blurry. We all live in the same communities and we all face the, social, the same social issues. And so um, it's time for us to stand behind our strengths. And you have cultivated the voices from on the ground. You represent the stakeholders who need these missions and this help. And so stand behind your strength that you're the voice for those individuals. Allow the business sector to stand behind the strength of what they're good at and allow the government sector to be able to funnel those resources to what works. So if we can drop our egos, I think we can really all begin to work together and accept each other in each other's spaces and kind of, you know, bump elbows and give each other some room and space that honor each other for the strengths that we have at the table. Um, and then the last thing I would say is last night when we were all sitting around kind of talking and getting, getting started, um, I was reminded of a scene from a Spike Lee film school days. Has anybody seen this? And it's about racial issues within the African American community. And there's a moment where um, the protagonist comes out in the middle of the campus and he starts screaming, wake up. He keeps saying it over and over and he gets louder and he gets louder until everybody comes out of the dormitories and they're all standing around him. And I think we're at this moment as not just a sector, but as a country and as a world. And so this is our opportunity to really wake up and start to do things differently and be more innovative. I, I would absolutely say agency ego. Um, we've raised $100 million in the last 18 months during probably the hardest economy in, in America's recent history. And that was so easy compared to dealing with the agency egos of 77 partners on one campus. Raising 100 million was way easier than getting 77 people to agree to come to one place and set aside their egos. And, and I think the egos get in the way in at least four or five different ways. One is there's an ego that gets in the way of saying, well, we've always done it that way. There needs to be an idea that it's okay to try it a new way. Let's use some database, some evidence base. Let's do it differently. But the agencies that say, we've done it this way for 20 years, 30 years, 15 years, or we've always done it that way, it's that ego gets in the way. The other is the ego gets in the way in terms of working with other partners. Uh, no, that's what we do. Uh, you don't do that. And so it needs to be an understanding that somebody else does that and does it maybe better than you. And maybe you do something better and let's get back to our core competencies and let somebody else. 
And I think, candidly, with some of your stats you were talking about earlier, think about this. We've doubled the nonprofits in Texas, but we're doing worse as a collective. You know, that, I mean, that's in essence your data that, that, you, that you pulled out. Maybe our problem is we're getting so segmented, like cable TV, if you will, and what we need to do is start thinking about working back together. Now, that may be informal working together, or it may simply be merging back together. Candidly, I think there's a lot of nonprofits that simply should die. I, I, I think should just simply go away because they're interfering with the development and innovation of other partnerships and, and growing. And when you start getting so many CEOs and so many boards and so many fundraising efforts and so many capital campaigns, rather than either, either in a strategic alliance relationship or formal mergers, it would be a lot better if the agencies started working together. And you start, I mean, probably one of the best is the airline industry. Think about how the airline industry is, you know, United Airlines has a relationship with US Air, and I think it's merging with Continental, sort of. And they, yet these are three independent companies, yet they have found that they need to do that to survive in the marketplace. And so you know, there's a lot you can be learning from the business sector in terms of how you work together and how you strategically align. Well, this has been a, an incredibly engaging dialogue. I hope you, you agree. I'm going to take this incredible opportunity to make one plug, uh, just because I think it's probably a worthwhile plug. Um, our second how-to practical that I just came out about a month ago, um, it's called Building Performance Measurement Systems. It's, it's um, not us, it's actually getting some pretty strong reviews and there are, um, we have a resource table out there where you can pick up a little thing. It's downloadable free, the entire book um, is downloadable for free on our website. <clears throat> and I think instead of trying, I have all these notes and interesting points, I think I'm just gonna sum up with this last piece with, with um, um, I, I think this point around complacency is, is dead on. Um, I can't put my finger on why there's complacency um, because it's probably a very complicated question. But um, we, we have to move from complacency to wake up. I think that's just great. I think, I think we just gotta wake up because if we really care about the things we say we care about, um, there's not a lot we're moving the dial on. Um, and by waking up, I think we're gonna have to move from ego to impact. And, and that's going to be very hard. It's, it's hard for me uh, on a daily basis. I can tell you that right now. It's going to be hard in the many conversations I'm going to have today and tomorrow and next week. And that's going back because of the sustainability problem. Um, and, because, and, and that is really sort of how the rubber meets the road for us. Um, I, I can't thank you all enough. I think you have amazing insights. And I thank you all for uh, listening. And I hope to see you around in the next day or so. Thanks. Thank you and uh, enjoy the next two days. Hey.